How are you today? Joyful. Why are we joyful? Because Jesus is in our hearts. Amen. We all of us have words to communicate. Words are very important for us to communicate. But words come from two places. From our thoughts and from our feelings. When it comes from our thoughts, yes, it's wonderful, scientific, rational, logical, wonderful. But when it comes from our heart, that's when we resemble what is about being compassionate. What's it about being loving, forgiving, merciful, charitable? Also, sometimes what happens, we do the other ways, the opposite. You know, hurtful, proud, you know, taking vengeance about others' deeds towards us, all those things. Here, Jesus is asking us to make our prayers come from our hearts than from our minds. When we make our prayers just as thoughts, a logical, a rational you know, combination of words, no. It's all, it's all about babbling like the pagans. God is asking us to make our prayer from our hearts, which is relational, which is intimate, which is filial. This prayer, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, we have been reciting this prayer for years together. I just want to walk with you with this beautiful prayer. The first two words, Our Father. In all the major religions or minor religions in the world, people always looked up to God as their master, as their Lord, God, as the owner, as the creator. Yes, of course, we also look up to our own God with all these names. But Jesus brought a new understanding for us to look up to God as our own Abba, as our own Father. Our Father. It's not my Father. It's our Father. That intimate relationship first, personal communion with God, like speaking to God as if we talk to our own beloved fathers in our families. And there is no like a separate father when we speak to God. For all people in the world, the whole universe has one father. That the universality and unity. The second beautiful word is who art in heaven. Not like it is about this separation from us. Rather, the highness, the great quality of the heavenly father for us. And hallowed be thy name. It's not that we make God's name holy. It's not that we make God's name sanctified. Because God is full of holiness. God is the holiness. But what is this hallowed be thy name? Making God's name holy in my life. Beholding God's name holy through my valued life. When I value God as the priority, the predominant priority of my life, I make his name holy in my personal life. When I do something good, when I remain something good, when I become good, my doing and me being, when it is good, then I behold God's name as holy in my personal, in my social life. And the next verse is, Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Many a time what happens, we come to God with all our grocery list. Lord, I need this, I want that, I, I need that to be fulfilled. No. God knows what we want in our lives, but the only thing is that we have to be the obedient children of God. It's God's will to be fulfilled in our lives. It's God's kingdom to be revealed through our lives. We need to be obedient children. When we prioritize His will, all our wants and needs will be fulfilled. Sometimes what happens, we, we just use Him for our needs. No, we must have Him as a priority, thus we get all our needs and wants be fulfilled. 
The next beautiful sentence is, On earth as it is in heaven. The crux of this line is, we all becoming, we all are called to become the paradise, the little paradise, walking paradise on earth. When we have God in our hearts, in our lives, in our families, we become heaven on earth. The second portion of the prayer is, give us this day our daily bread. Yes, we all need bread for our life sustenance, but for our eternal sustenance, for our everlasting life, we need that super natural food, the Eucharist. Give us this day our daily bread, both for our body and for our soul. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The simple concept here is, if I want God for God's forgiveness, I have to forgive others. And if I have to forgive others, I need God's forgiveness. It's vice versa. Whatever I seek from the Lord is also sought from me. If I ask God to give me something, God has his own condition for us to fulfill that with the other people. Be it for any, any values and virtue that we seek from God. Forgiveness is the first gift that we could receive from him to offer. And to offer, we need to receive from him. It's like vice versa. If I don't forgive, I don't receive from him. And if I don't receive from him, I don't offer him. Offer to other people. The last thing is, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. See, when we overcome some temptations, it is the moment we glorify God and we sanctify the soul. And we need to work on overcoming our own little temptations that really lead us to Satan's trap and clutches and deliver us, deliver us from evil. We all know there is going to be a final judgment before the Lord's coming. And we plead God that he saves our soul not to indulge ourselves into that evil or judgment, final judgment into hell. So therefore, dear brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful prayer. It's not just simple, ordinary lines in the prayer. It's Jesus' prayer. It came from Jesus' prayer life. And he's asking us to increase our relationship with God. Every time we recite this prayer, let us listen to every word in the prayer. Because every word reveals what is God for us and what we are to God. God bless you all. May the name of God be glorified. Amen.